want to be uh, um, thrown in or rub shoulders with certain people and disavow their knowledge of knowing uh, other people. I see this in the church. You know, the where the scripture says uh, um, that the, the poor shouldn't be put in the back of the seat, but put them right up front with everybody else in the body of Christ. Um, they'll acknowledge this scripturally, but they will not. Uh, act in it. They will not um, be a part of that. It's because where their hearts are. Oh, they'll say they do, but they always push the, the the person that maybe has an oily complexion or doesn't speak as well or whatever to the back of the fellowship, I've noticed. We'll never give them uh, time on the church stage to share their testimony or, or anything else. And this is because their hearts are in the wrong place. And this is what I'm seeing in institutionalized church systems for the most part today. At one time, I believe there were churches that would recognize a man of God and say this person has a deep spiritual understanding. Um, and they would put him in the position of an elder. But rather, I only knew in my last church maybe one man, and I'm not going to mention any names, that truly had a deep spiritual understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ and his experience in his life, that man should have been an elder. But the rest of them were just Bibleists. It was all up here. They had no heart for the Lord. And the only thing that they would recognize are um, the financial blessings of people that joined their church. And never mind the spiritual maturity or the spiritual blessings of a of a member of the church outfit and I couldn't figure it out it disgusted me quite frankly but I could see it I could feel it I could see it all around me and of course the Lord moved me when I was trying to go with the Anglican church <laughs> my understanding was atrocious back then uh, to um, he um, appeared to me sort of uh, I could sense spiritually that he was in another room and I went towards it, and Dr. Gross told me, Roland, did you see it? He's the same, follow me, follow me. Don't attach yourself to a denomination. Don't attach yourself to an anti-Christ type of church system. Now, it may seem pretty funny to you that I'm wearing this shirt today, and let's see, I got the, my Lightship Ministries and the United States Chaplain Fellowship. Um, Lightship Ministries is my own in the United States Chaplain Fellowship. God led me to a man in spirit to start this organization. But the first thing that I found is, and, and he's a he has a PhD in theology, the man, and I, um, because I know my own him to start the organization, because I know what the world looks at. But this man could see past what the world looks at and see the heart. By a heart for the Lord and people that truly uh, knew Him and followed Him, and this is something that I've uh, I've come to realize is most people who claim His name do not have a love for the truth within them. They have a love for something that looks very, very close to the truth of God. I also know another man that will argue about that Jesus Christ. Um, could not have been a physical being, um, and I won't get into other cults that think that too, um, in his doctrine, but yet he claimed to believe in Christ. No, Jesus Christ was the God-man. He was incarnate. He was God incarnate in the flesh. And the only, this is the only way that a true believer in their heart of hearts comes to Jesus Christ is by realizing he was man without sin, the Father if you will, impregnated the Virgin Mary and, and the conception of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all take after our father uh, from, from Adam or, you know, in a paternal society. God created a paternal society. And this is why Jesus Christ was without sin. It's because he took after his father who was in heaven. He couldn't have taken after his mother because then he would have been sinful. And this has to do with male authority again. I don't want to get too much into that, but I want to touch on that. That he was in the likeness of sinful flesh. 
because of his mother, but yet he was God incarnate in man's form because of who his father was. And there's a spiritual principle in this, and in, in, uh, specifically in ministry, which nowadays in postmodernism, people will refuse to recognize uh, the significance of male authority. This is how God works. And systematic theologies, uh, people with PhDs, and people that are doing it all from their head hate people that follow Christ in spirit. And even if they're broken, like myself, uh, with a uh, traumatic brain injury, uh, they'll hate me trying to put forth the truth of God, specifically because, well, maybe his brain doesn't work like it should, or maybe he's not getting his point across as well. But Peter wasn't a good speaker. Paul was considered contemptible in his speech and his bodily presence was weak, the scripture tells us. So again, this all has to do with our heart condition. And it just amazes me that they will recognize money, recognize position within the world, recognize um, um, education, but they will not recognize a man or woman of God that um, walks in humility and has been broken in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and specifically in ministry, when uh, giving uh, ministry positions to men, like being an elder in a church, um, if you walk in the spirit of truth, you are, the Holy Spirit of God is uprooting them, is showing them up, and that's why they won't allow you uh, into an elder position for the most part. And this is something that I'm learning, and it, it's horrid to me that uh, this is what the church has become. And it's hard to me that the things that God blessed this country with, like I'm using the old flag behind me today, has become secondary because we have turned our back on the Holy Spirit of God. Maybe not intellectually, but in our heart of hearts, we no longer are a God-honoring society. And because we love something other than the truth of God, who is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, everybody. Bye.